you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Yesterday was October 1st, and Nigeria's Independence Day. Yes, but it was a day of rallies and campaign for political parties. The Labour Party especially, and the Peter Rabi supporters took to the streets of major cities to hold what they called one man, one million man work, two million man work, and all the rest. Let me show you what those rallies looked like in some of the cities. First is in Lagos. Look at uh, the picture of the Obidati rally in Lagos. And from Lagos, let me show you what it looked like in Kaduna State. And of course, uh, that's Kaduna. Uh, from there, uh, pictures of that of Oshun in the southwest region of the country. And uh, Bauchi in the northwest. But she says, of course, in the northeast region of the country. So these are some of the states where the Obidati uh, rallies took place. So, well, there have been reactions to these rallies. For example, the spokesperson of the APC presidential campaign, Mr. Fessor Skiyama, put up a post on his social media where he said that the area shots are the best uh, to look at. Uh, the way to look at this, at best, the crowd here is not more than a thousand people, which is appro approximately just two polling units. He, he tweeted at a video showing the Obidati, one of the Obidati rallies. Now, an aide to the former president, Gulag Jonathan, Mr. Renu Amokri, also took to his social media page. He said the so called one million man marches are mostly a gathering of traders in various Nigerian towns and cities uh, who close down their markets that are heavily dominated by people of southeastern origin to do what in the military is called a show of force, end of quote. It might be a surprise that a Peter O.B. and Labour Party were not considered much of a threat in the early days of uh, being receiving some attention politically and the rave recently. Could uh, Peter O.B. pose a major threat or upset in the race considering that most polls now are being in Obi, uh, Peter Obi's favor. Well, don't forget, um, someone like uh, Atiku Abubaka was also in Gombe. Uh, the, the crowd that came out uh, of, uh, for Atiku Abubaka in you know, Gombe also got attention. That is, the, it, that is it on your screen. Let's get talking. Now, the campaigns have started. So what does these rallies mean? Do the turnout of people really mean anything? Is uh, the Peter Obi who has caused uh, re upset in the polls really caused a real upset at the polling booths and being joined by one of um, the uh, the leaders of the National Conscience uh, Forum and a leader of, of course, in the Labour Party, former presidential candidate, Alaji Yunusa Tanko, just here live now. Abuja uh, Sudo, thank you so much indeed for coming. Thank you today. very much for having me. And virtually from London is a former presidential aide to former President Gulag Jonathan, Mr. Reno Omokri. Thank you so much, Mr. Omokri, for joining us tonight. Perhaps I should thank begin you. with you. Uh, you have spoken. Uh, you, you seem to be uh, concerned, and in fact, the Labour Party have officially responded to you to say, well, you are, seek, you are talking about the rallies of uh, uh, the Obidati because you're seeking attention. Uh, what are your views, and what exactly gets your attention about these Obidati rallies? Well, here's the thing, you know, I spoke about the rallies, I spoke very positively about the rallies and the punch carried that. You read um, the more critical comment, but there was um, a more positive comment. But here's the thing about rallies. Rallies tend to excite the base. They don't expand the base. I'll say that one more time. Rallies tend to excite the base. They don't expand the base. So what will expand your base are canvassing. Canvassing. And the Labour Party is not canvassing. Right now, the only parties that are really canvassing are the PDP, the APC, and then the NNPP. So when you're having rallies, what you're doing is that you're actually preaching to the choir. Now, if you see, you quoted the, the spokesman for the APC, PCC, and he was actually right. These rallies, they, they have maybe about between 1,000 and 2,000 people. Now, what's happening, what you're seeing here is that, you know, in various states across the country, you have... Um, 
people of Southeast origin, you know, they are the most itinerant people in Nigeria. And that's where a lot of the base of Peter is coming from. So obviously, yes, they will gather, they will have these rallies. But what's the effect of these rallies? Look, what's going to determine this election is going to be at the registered voters. And we see in the Northwest, we've got 22.67 million registered voters. In the Southwest, we've got 18.3 million registered voters. In the South South, we've got 15.2 million registered voters. In the North Central, we've got 14.1. In the North East, 4.8. And then in the South East, we've got 11.49. Now, those are realities. What the Labour Party is doing, they're actually preaching to the choir. You know, and if, except they expand their base, I mean, w I mean, if the election is going to be a foregone conclusion. I heard um, what the former education minister said when you asked her. She said that uh, Peter Obi was a shade brighter than the others. By what parameter am I, am I asked? If you invigilate that, but I mean, if you look at the facts, you see, educationally, in their personal life, their experience in government and in corruption, Peter Obi is at the bottom of the pile. Let's talk about education. Amongst the four major presidential candidates. You know, Rabbi Mr. Kwankwasu has a PhD in water engineering. Waziri Atiko Obaka has a master's with distinction in international relations. Bola Tinibu has a bachelor of science in accounting from Chicago State University. Now, what does Peter Obi have? He has a second class degree in philosophy. Now, obviously, that is the least educationally qualified person. Now, if you look at their private life, Waziri Atiko Obaka employs 12,500 people producing made in Nigeria goods and services right here in Nigeria with Nigerian citizens. Peter Obi is the single largest individual importer in Nigeria. So when he talks about moving Nigeria from consumption to production, it's almost like a contradiction. You are the single largest individual importer in Nigeria. So how can that be? All right. Now, if you look at the just a moment. Uh, just a moment. So let's take you. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to come to a few of the issues that you have raised and the ones you have not talked about. Let me allow, allow you, Mr. Tanko, to react to what you have said. Um, you heard what Rano said, basically, that you do not have the right base and you are not guarding the base. What You are, you are exciting the base. Mm. Uh, how do you react to it? And mm. then you first, in the first place, they said, you guys do not have uh, uh, the structure. Now, uh, let me quickly, let me correct what he said. He said, we are singing to the choir. And the choir is responding loud and clear. Even he himself can hear the voice where he's staying out of the country. The choir has responded so loudly that he's become so perturbed that he's given reeling out statistics that are all truly unfounded. Let me, first of all, not be distracted with some of those false uh, statistics that was given. Let me, first of all, thank Nigerians for coming out en masse to show that organic love for Peter Obi. When you say organic love? Yes, organic. What do you mean? That what I mean, they are not doing a copy and paste Kind of you company. mean Labour Party is not the one organizing this no, rally? No, not a single organization. We have not even... We nobody have not, is sponsoring this Nobody, rallies. not single person. We have not even kicked off the campaign. What you saw in JAWS was an organic organization by the Middle Bed Forum to give endorsement for Peter Obi. What you saw on the 1st of October was the best independence celebration any in the, the nation has ever gotten. Over 40 cities. All the zones of the Federal Republic of Nigeria were represented, and they gave that organic love, without unsolicited organic love that was given to Peter Obi. And here you are, people are saying that there's a choir noise that all of them are so disturbed about that is making them jittery. And now we are satisfied and we are thanking them for, for making that particular com coming out in that large number. And of course, our principal tweeted that there's a gentle, there's a girl, Chioma who came out. The lives of Choma are replicated in Amina, Ankwa, and Akpan, and the rest of them, uh, Ashake, all over the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Those are the people that we are fighting for. Those are the people that we are trying to get out of the quagmire on their unborn children to protect them and rescue them. It's, not those particular yeah. individuals who could not even start the test on he time. said, in terms of qualification, yes. That your candidate is perhaps the least of the four people that you will put forward as the top four, four I mean, front runners in the race. I am, so, the I am so happy that he didn't say that he has a fake document. He only said that he has a second class physiology, which he got in University of Nigeria, Unsuka, confirmed.
And the least requirement that you want for a presidential candidate is just a primary certificate. They don't even say that you have to have five credits, no, a primary certificate, which of course is alluded to a particular presidential person at the moment now, but there was no any issue as regards to it. So we are glad we have a qualified person running for the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But in terms and of competence and capacity, mm. is made uh, a point there that is least qualified. Not Do, at all. Can Nigerians uh, vote for a least qualified person? When he even visited the Emir of Kano, he listed even the five, the three C's, which you alluded to even the six C's. He said the man has competence, he has character, he's consistent, he's credible, he has compassion, he has the capacity to lead Nigeria. This is the quality that we know. And you know, so I want to challenge any of the other candidates. If they can generate this kind of love that we saw in Peter Obi all across the Federal Republic, the Federal Republic of Nigeria in one sweep, none, none, none of them can generate it. We didn't this, give the. We this didn't even this the, early, early coming out for your candidate, mm. what, what do you think it, it means? What, what does it portend? It shows that Nigerians are ready to take back their country, irrespective of their religion, tribe, or creed. They have shown that love. And uh, I can bet you there is obedience in every family household. And I'm sure in Omokari's house there is obedience, including the presidency. What do you mean by that? Exactly. Because there are staff in the, federal, in the presidency whose children are out of schools. And ASU strike is on for almost eight months. There are, there are workers in the presidency whose children cannot take care of three square meals. There are in people in Asu Villa that, even in their homes, they cannot be assured of electricity. So, Peter Obi stands it, for, the, for the average Nigerian? Yes. It, it stands for the voice it stands of... stands for every Nigerian who has that, been that, That is what you, Labour Party, of are course. pushing for. Of let course. me allow Rano... Because he has shown it. Let me allow Rano to come back. Um, on this program last week, uh, Comrade Adam Soshemale said, uh, the pain that the PDP will feel is that uh, most of the places that are traditional PDP stronghold are now, have now become uh, Peter Obi and Labour Party stronghold. And uh, who will get the, the, the back end of the stick this time around? Um, it will be Atiku Abubakar and the PDP. I'd like you to respond to that. Well, I will respond to that, but before I do, I'd like to respond to some of the things that this gentleman has said. First and foremost, that statement credited to the former um, MI of Kano has been disclaimed by that man. He said he didn't make that statement. So that's a false statement. And then if you looking at, he said that, you know, that um, uh, Peter Obi will address the issue of uh, acid strike and other strikes. Look, Peter Obi was governor of a number of states. While he was governor, doctors were on strike for 13 months. Am I lying? You can ask him. While he was governor of that state, you know, schools were closed down. I think it was seven months. You can research it. You can Google it. So, I mean, these people that have come up on air and say that Peter Obi will make Nigeria into paradise. Look, when he was governor of a number of states, did he turn a number into a paradise? Now, if you address the issue by Colonel uh, Adams of Germany, look, the issue with the APC is much more than the issue with the PDP. I do agree that uh, the, some of the areas, because Peter Obi is more likely to take votes that would have come to the PDP than votes that would have come to the APC. But the whole country has rejected the APC. The whole country has rejected the APC. So come, Comrade Adams or Sean Money, I mean, I mean, he's not in a position to give us counsel. Look, this country is where it is right now, almost comatose, almost on its knees, because of the APC. While Nigerians, I mean, while the PDP was in power, Nigerians know what they were enjoying. They knew how much was the price of oil. They knew how much was dollar to the Naira. They knew how much the security situation. So there's no basis for comparison between the PDP and the NPC. As a matter of fact, when Wazir Atiko Baka was chairman of the National Economic Council, Nigeria paid off its entire foreign debt. Zero. We owed zero. Right now, we are owing about 48 trillion Naira. So Comrade Adam Sashomani is uh, unfortunately mistaken. Now, going back to the analysis, I said, if you look at the four presidential candidates, by what parameter can you say Peter Obi is the best? There's none. You know, if you compare their experiences in government, look at when he was in government. Even one person has a better record of, of in office. Okay, you talk about corruption, which is one, one of their strongest parties. The only 
person among the four major presidential candidates mentioned in the Pandora paper scandal is Peter Obi. He was mentioned as corruptly enriching himself and I, I don't know if it's true. I'm not saying it is true. I'm just saying what the Pandora papers say. That it was mentioned that corruptly taking monies out of Nigeria and hiding them in offshore banks or uh, offshore accounts. Mr. Mokri, let, yeah, yeah, let, me, let me allow uh, Alayi Tanko to respond to those. Well, you see, um, we have a, ca a, 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 co a capable presidential candidate who is not afraid to answer questions directly. When he raised the issue of Pandora box, Peter Obi had come out and cleared the air clearly on what was involved. And so we will want the same thing to happen to their own presidential candidate when they have been accused of the corruption that are already taking place. These are people who have put Nigeria into perpetual poverty right from the beginning. They have been involved in corruption. Are you talking about the Dick Cheney, Malabo issues that already been, not been swept over the carpet? We are talking about somebody who has been accused by his principal. Openly, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dr. Olusha Obasanjo, has completely come out to debunk that he cannot vouch for the person of his own candidate. That is a complete indictment that comes. Nobody has come out to indict Peter Obi, verbally, physically, or none. There's nobody. And you know, you see, for now, there's no uh, time for hide and seek story. anymore. Nigerians are tired of games and people lying to them. Omakari is just saying that the, uh, uh, the Emir of Kano Depok, I was there. If you can place the couple, the Emir spoke in Hausa, and he clearly mentioned the capacity of the competency of Peter Obi. I was there, I was not told. So they don't come onto the air and keep on telling people's lies. Nigerians have known the truth, mm. and they are ready to fight for their and country. So, well, well, and so, so nobody, yeah. any time you make any statement, mm -hmm. you should be able to justify right. it. So, I was uh, physically uh, there. Yeah, I'll give 30 seconds for, for both of you to, yes. uh, to respond. And these are some of the issues that we are talking about capacity nigerians want to see that's who will right. lead them with capacity uh, uh corruption or anti-corruption uh, record nigeria wants to see the, who has the best to vote for yes. so let me allow 30 seconds for each mr mokri please go first your final thought on the program tonight well i would say that um, former president ulisha gopasojo endorsed waziri atiko Obaka in 2019 and that he said he was the best candidate then and that this was a man who had the capacity so if what he said is true why would former president uh, ulisha gopasojo endorse him and also in terms of education waziri atiko Obaka has a master's with distinction in international relations in terms of employment and one of the major problems here of nigeria right now is that we have about 67 million unemployed people or underemployed people Wazir Atiku Abaka, on his own private life, employs 12,500 Nigerians producing bait in Nigerian goods and services. And if you talk about experience in government, right now Nigeria is having a debt crisis. We are owing so much. This was a man who, as chairman of the National Economic Council of Nigeria, paid off Nigeria's debt right. completely. So you have a man who is ready and who is right. prepared. We need to, to we need to, yeah, we need to go. Yeah, we need to go. When you talk seconds. about the issue of debt, these are the same people who have put us in this perpetual debt. It started from them. While he was vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, they are the ones that put us in this particular debt issue. And when we talk about issue of production, we say, fine, our principal import, but do you know that he doesn't sell this particular product by himself? There were people, Nigerians, who were employed, and most of them have learned the trade in terms of training them, and they have become productive. So in that regard, we are producing people who can be productive in nature. And when you look at the credibility and the capacity of Peter Obi, he has shown it in a number of states. I have told you before here that he has synergized with the Nigerian police, providing security for his people. Not only that, he synergized with the Nigerian Medical Association, building hospitals. He synergized with the in, in, industry, making sure that the like, hotels and all. Uh, it's in the with making sure that our roads on the street, people are connected from their villages. This is practical example of yeah. what, and this is somebody who did not owe any debt, challenge anybody. He paid up even workers who are in their pension uh, and all. This you. is one of the things that you should be expecting when Peter Obey becomes uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In I love you, Unicef. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank so you very much, much for, for coming. Me. And Mr. Reno Mokri, thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you.